Look, I understand if you're trying to move to another home, you wanna sell your home and get to another place. Now there's a lot of stuff that goes into that process. You need to pick the right agent that has done it hundreds of times before. And not only that, but they are straightforward and honest because they wanna know your numbers, know where you're at and get to know you. Not just a quick sale, not, hey, you can go buy this home, we can sell your other home and go for it. No, and there are a lot of moving parts in this and you need an agent that understands that. So let me run through a few of these things because you're probably thinking, how do I do it? How do I move to another home by selling my home? My suggestion is now two options. If you have a lot of funds, I'm thinking there's probably only 10% of this, maybe 20%, but if you have a lot of funds or a lot of equity in the home, yes, you can go buy the home first. You can put 5% down and then sell your home. I always say this with a caveat, know your numbers because we can't, as a real estate agent, ever guarantee a price. Yes, we can do comps. Yes, we can be really certain about the number of price we're gonna sell your home for. We can't guarantee it. The market goes down, no one wants your home, location, this or that, and that's just being frank, that's being honest. So let's say you go buy that home for 5% down. Now we turn around and list your home and it doesn't hit where you wanna sell it. Now we gotta do a price reduction. Doesn't hit, gotta do a price reduction. Or we get low ball offers. We just don't get anything. And you're having the price reduce or worst case, and maybe not in worst case, you turn in a rental. But I guarantee you, depending on the price range, that rental is not even quashing that mortgage or paying for the mortgage basically. Or you're losing, you lose money, you're not paying for the mortgage, or maybe you're making like a hundred bucks a month and you're having to deal with tenants and whatnot. Now, maybe you've always wanted a rental, great, there you go. And you're kind of forced into that being a landlord rental. Ah, there's worse things and you're not losing money, uh, hopefully not. The catch is though, if you're on a tight budget for the rest of us, 80% or so, if the numbers don't work out, you can be in a pinch, you can be stuck. Um, or you could be losing a lot of money. So say you go buy that house for 5% and yes, you're like, hey, I'm gonna sell my other home for 600,000. Doesn't sell, 550. Well, there's 50,000 off. Let's say it goes to 500. There's $100,000 off. You lost of that equity that you thought you had and now you've bought a higher end home. Your mortgage could be a lot more because you were planning on using that money to put it down on that 5% mortgage to pay off because you wanted to get 20% on the other home you just lost all that. Or now you can't get out PMI on that other home because you don't have 20%. It's huge. And I guarantee you there's agents out there that will just go sell your home, go buy a home, go do this and that. They don't care about your numbers. They don't care about how tight you are with numbers and figuring it out. So with myself as a real estate broker, I wanna know all your numbers. All right, where's our best case scenario? Where's our worst case? Where do we need to hit? What numbers do we need to sell your home for? What do we need to buy this home for? We have to know all the details. And then we can have a realistic line of, okay, yes, you can go buy that first. No, here's what I recommend. And this is, I think, more of a strategy I always suggest. Contingent sale. Now, the contingent sale has one stigma and it is sometimes a hard thing, but not in this market and it never used to be. Now in bidding war markets, yes, it's harder to use contingent offers because what you're doing is you're going to find the home you wanna buy. You go and offer a contingent offer saying, yes, I'm gonna sell my home. I'm selling my home. Here's what we think it's gonna sell for. Here's the comps. We're gonna list it within five days once we get under contract of your home. Um, we're still gonna do a home inspection on your home, get through that while we're selling our home and we hope to have our home pending and usually wrap it all up in about 45 days to 60 days total. That's okay, it works. And the nice thing about it is there's an escape clause or escape thing for you. If you can't get your home under contract for the price you want, you can always back out of the home that you're buying. Now it sucks for the sellers that you got under contract that you wanna buy, but if you don't hit your numbers, you're not stuck with the home that now you just bought and a home you can't sell for the price you need to with those numbers, you're not put in a really tight spot with mortgages, um, house poor, maybe can't even make the payments and now you're screwed, like royally screwed. So instead of doing that, do it the smart way, do it concise. And of course, numbers, when we go contingent, we're gonna know what your house should sell for. Now, can we guarantee it? Absolutely not. And if anybody says that, they're a fool. And I, and I get, we can be pretty spot on. Like I can pretty much say, yes, this should sell for that. But what if the buyers all go or the market dumps or who knows? And this market's so weird right now. And I mean, literally up and down and all over. Yes, uh, anyways. Um, so with the contingent offer, 
you get your home ready. I even get pictures up and ready. Sometimes I like to list the home first so we know what's going to happen. And then we go around and find you a home. I've had buyers do that before. They're like, you know what? We have a bunch of inventory. We know what we're picking. That used to be in the past. We don't have the inventory now. So we're kind of doing a reverse contingency where we go find the home first, then we go ahead and list. Now, with that being said, I've had buyers go around and just saw it happen a week ago, literally called it. And I was going to make this video a week ago and I was waiting to see what happened. Sure enough, I called it home under contract. They got it bought. They haven't listed their home yet. Here's the number we're trying. I looked at the comps. I thought they were maybe trying 25, 40,000 high. Absolutely. Sure enough, nailed it. So now they had the home under contract. It almost blew up. They still decided to move forward because their numbers were tighter and they didn't get that extra thirty, forty thousand dollars that they thought they were going to use for the down payment. Now they still decide to move forward. Thank goodness. Um, but if your numbers are tight, you can always pull that parachute and be like, you know what? We can't sell it for what we thought. Uh, we can't buy that big a home. Or maybe now we have to change. And we were trying for a million dollar home. Now we have to drop it down to nine hundred thousand or eight hundred thousand because our home's only selling for five hundred and not six hundred thousand. But you can make those choices now without being stuck and being stuck by basically some agent or lender saying, hey, just put 5%, go buy that home first, then we'll go ahead and sell your home, no problem, here we go. Well, fuck, they don't care, honestly. And that's the problem, you have to pick the right agent. Like any employee um, out there, there's good and bad and excellent and not, and they don't care. Got a commission buying the home, get a commission selling your home no matter what, lender, got the home loan, done, I'm out, see ya, because they're not getting the loan for someone else buying your home, so peace, peace, peace. Uh, and some do care, don't get me wrong. There are some people that actually care, and maybe this is just them saying, hey, here's another product, we have another option. But in my mind, that's only for 10% of the people. That's not for the majority of the people out there that the numbers have to work, they are that tight. So I know I'm just spinning my wheel going on and on, but this has to be concise. And so my suggestion is always do a contingent sale if you're looking to buy or upgrade or move forward on the home. And I'm doing one right now again. We're listing the home and we're going to sell it first. We want to know the numbers. Then we will go and do a contingent buy on something else. And she's downgrading, moving on. That's fine. So that's, that's her style and it's a good style. It's to know your numbers first before you just go and buy something. I'm a huge number person. I think you should always know that. Now, if you have extra cash and you're okay with the 50,000 discrepancy where it's, hey, plus or minus 50K, I'm okay. I'm not going to be hurt either way or even 100K. And you're okay to roll that and say, you know what? Worst case, 100K, I'm not going to break the bank. I still know numbers. Then absolutely. Yes, you can go buy the home first for the 5% down. You know, we're not gonna be off by 100K. I mean, hopefully your, your real estate agent or realtor is not gonna be off by 100K with the comps. So that's where it comes in. They have to be straightforward. Now there are realtors out there. God, I know a few that just love to high list and price reduction, or no, price improvement's the new thing. Price improvement, price improvement, price improvement. Um, it happens. Now I have some sellers that wanna try higher and I've done it before, and we know going in there, hey, this is what we're doing. Week one, week two, boom, be aggressive, be aggressive, because you are trying way outside the realm of where's the comps at. That happens, and so you do get some of that, but if you start making that MO as a real estate broker, um, people are gonna know in town that your prices are always high. And right, who cares? You get the listing, you get it high, you can price drop, you're gonna sell it no matter what, but you beat out other people that aren't selling it or telling you the comps. So I come in and I'm very straightforward. Here's the price of your home, here's your comps. Plus or minus, you know, around here, depending on the market, and the market's weird right now, so who knows? Best case, bidding war, worst case, here's your numbers. Oh, you wanna try up there? Here's what's gonna happen. You're gonna know within a week, as we know as real estate brokers, if you don't have the traffic within a week, especially right now, because there are buyers everywhere, it's actually slowed down though, so just take that with caveat, the buyers have slowed down. Um, going in the fall, winter, people are starting to, at least in my mind, cozy in, fireplace, movies, football, soup, you know, all the good stuff, coziness. I don't want to rock the boat right now. So that's where the buyers are at. At least in my mind, it's definitely slowed down. A lot of hand movements there. Um, <laughs> golly. But 
With that being said, with the buyers, they know their numbers and they know if the buyers are there or not. So when I'm telling them, here's your numbers, high and low. Oh, you want to start up here? That's fine. We'll know within a week. Okay, here's your options. Price reduction within a week to 10 days to two weeks, dump it. Not too aggressive, maybe aggressive, depending on how fast they want to sell. Oh, you want to do a hold tight and sit? That's fine. But remember, the longer you're on the market, the longer you are as a buyer's agent. Now let's switch over. If I'm the buyer's agent, not a seller's agent, and I see you on 30 days, I'm coming in with a 20, 50,000 under price offer. Boom. Here you go. Uh, depending on the comps and what I run and go from there because you've been sitting on the market. So now I'm going to come in and already I, it's like a shark. I start circling. I can see that. Why? Now you may say, nope, not selling up for that low. Fine. Well, you're going to either have to do a price reduction if you want to sell or just pull off the market and you're wasting everybody's time because you're not selling because you just want to get a certain number. That's the case. Wait to list until next spring or summer when it's again a flip market. Now, next spring, next summer, let's hit that briefly and then we'll wrap up this video. Next spring, next summer, we're predicting if the interest rates go down, if they go down, there's going to be so many more buyers. What's that mean as a buyer? That means you're going to have a lot more competition and you're going to be paying more for that home that you could be buying right now. So if you're a buyer looking for next year, I would consider this fall. So if I was a buyer looking for another home or trying to upgrade or switch, I would be hunting this fall. Last year, last fall, last winter, we snagged homes. And I mean by we, my buyers, we literally went and snagged homes. You can ask me for the comps. I'll show you the homes. We snagged homes 50 to 100,000 under price because of the fall and winter prices that were going on because there was no buyers, people wanted to sell and they were out. That's going on again and that will happen this fall and winter. If the home is not priced right, if the buyers aren't there and they need to sell, you should be hunting for deals. If you're the seller and you're selling this fall and if I'm helping you or if someone else is helping you in this fall, you need to price accordingly or price reduce aggressively to get it sold to get the buyers in there so they can sell. Now, are you taking a hit? That depends on how much equity you have in your home, if you're ready to move, and if the price is right. Realistically, as a seller, no, because you know what you're trying to sell. It's ready to go and let's get it gone. It's all a market game. If the interest rates don't go down next year, the home sales could stall again because the buyers won't be there. The buyers may still be there, but who knows how they're going to nibble. So it's all a gamble on timing and it shouldn't be trying to time the market this or that it's on preference because everybody says stop trying to time the market I'm hit and miss I like to try to time it as best as I can for where I'm at so if I can wait six months and if it's gonna be better maybe but it may not and so you have to time the market of you know what I'm ready to sell they'll come to me and say Ron what do you think I will let you know what I think, what's happening in the market, in our local market. Don't go on national news, don't do this and that, because our market, like everybody's market, depending on where it's at, is so niched. What's going on in the city? What's going on in schools? What's going on with workforce uh, development? What's coming in to the state and then to the city? It's completely different in every state. So I see some realtors like, the market's booming. They don't preference for their city, for their state. They make it sound like the whole freaking country's on fire. And I look there, I'm like, ah, not here. Or, hey, we are on fire. Over there is slacking, over here is slacking. And so you can look at the maps in a macro and micro. In real estate, you really need to focus on the micro first of how your city's doing and what's going on. Now, there are macro influences, of course, interest rates, loans, how the economy's doing, um, everything like that. Of course, that does take an effect how it's going here. But to be honest, your city, how many people are moving to your city? How many people are moving outside your city? Um, simple stats like that. Do we have inventory? Do we not? Are they allowing buildings? Are they not? Our city, we are, Olympia is extremely slow to build. So we have no inventory to build. I saw some new apartments going up. I know of a development myself I'm selling for some developers. They're going to build homes that we need. Like we need these homes more than anything. And they're going to fly off the market. Um, brilliant on their part, good for them uh, to buy this land and to develop because we need those homes. And lumber is down on price. I just went and bought a bunch of lumber for a shed I got to build. 
frame it up. But it's crazy how it used to be so much higher and now it's lower in lumber, which is great. That's what we need. So depending on the timing of the market and depending where you're at in your life can tell you when to sell or not. And that's a realtor's job, realtor's job to tell you what's going on, where they think it's at. And then you take your, that two cents, your grain of salt and figure out, okay, yes, let's go ahead and list. Or you know what? Let's wait until spring. You know, let's go from there. And I have stackpiled listings for spring and summer. I have stackpiled and listings ready to go now. More listings coming up. Buyers are still around, at least in my part, but they're definitely being picky. Some are, hey, they know exactly what they want. Some have no clue. And I swear are gonna lose money because they're waiting <laughs> and waiting and waiting. So again, find the right realtor. Realtor, sorry, why did I say Realtor? Realtor, find the right Realtor. Find the right real estate broker, like myself, that will shoot you straight, take in every different aspect of your life, what you're looking for, and actually make a whole program just for you. It's not boilerplate, here's what you get, let's go ahead and go through the, the wheel. It's high quality, high service, dedicated exactly for you, for that program to buy or sell. And that's what I do with my home buyers, my home sellers, residential, my commercial investors, my commercial land, my developers, everything is niched, high quality program lined out for you. That's the whole point of this. There is no one shoe fits all. There's some boilerplates here and there, but to be honest, everything is customized. And if you don't get a customized program, you don't get high quality service, uh, then you really don't care about your money because you're just picking some agents. They say, here's what I got. But they're, if they're not doing it constantly, if they haven't done hundreds of sales, if they don't have the record and they don't know the market to niche with it, ears on the ground. I mean, you bleed, eat, sleep. Kids soccer practice, I was talking with Joe for an hour and bam, the time flew and I'm like, luckily I was kind of watching the sun out of the corner. I, our practices are two hours, so I did get a good hour of watching Wyatt. I got another one today. But it was great. I was talking with Joe about real estate constantly. I mean, it's just, you just eat it up. And that, that's what you're looking for. Someone just full in it, not just ankle deep. I mean, you are swimming and rolling in that real estate. At least in my mind. That's what I want when I look for anything outside of real estate. I want someone that's so passionate, so in it that they can tell me everything. And then, of course, I take my two, two cents. I do my research on my own and then find the right person, whatever area I'm looking for. That's where I'm at in real estate. That's who I am. And that's what you should be looking for as a buyer or seller in real estate, no matter residential, commercial, land, investments, whatever you're doing, that's what you're hunting for. And that's what you should be getting is a customized real estate plan of action for what you're deciding to do. All right, Captain Ron out. Have a good day. Uh, fall is officially here. I am loving it. Almost. Not officially. I feel like it's here. I know it's coming up officially. All right. Captain on out. Have a good day. See you guys.